Like many young girls, Brianne Breezy Bohannick dreamed of someday playing at the highest levels and showing that she belonged. In September of 2011, life unveiled a different plan for Breezy. Now she has embarked on a new journey to live life to the fullest and to give others hope. Sports have been a major part of our life, um, primarily because I think, you know, kids are just absolutely, they, they want to be out there and be active. And we've always promoted that, especially living here in California. There's so much to do. And they've all just kind of gravitated to, uh, to one sport. And somehow it's taken on kind of a life of its own in soccer. And it became kind of the family sport. But it's been a big part of our lives and something that we absolutely want to make sure that we foster because being outside, being active, and being part of a community and actually learning how to be part of a team is extremely important for a life skill. Breezy's always been uh, kind of a go-getter. Some games she was on and you couldn't stop her. And often she'd come home with painful bumps and bruises. A particular weekend, I think it was Labor Day, Breezy was playing a tournament and the pain was significant. It kept growing and growing. And at first I wasn't, I was less sympathetic to it, but my wife pointed out, this is pretty serious and it continues to grow. And Breezy let us know, this isn't normal. Well, over a series of uh, a week or two, um, we actually got involved in, in with some therapists and with some doctors, and they thought that what we had was an IT band that was stretching, and he recommended that we, we do an x-ray to, to look further, and we said, absolutely, we'll do that. It was osteosarcoma, a rare, aggressive bone cancer. I, I have to say, honestly, I was kind of in a fog, and I just didn't know what it meant because we haven't had anybody in the family really um, experienced cancer before so it was all very new and I just kind of felt that we will do this day by day we will rely on our faith to get us through this and we will continue to look at the blessings along the way. Stan and Debbie gathered the family together and Breezy herself told them the news. We sat everybody down and explained uh, what was going on. We said, we've got a very serious topic to, to discuss with you. And it was Breezy who actually said, I have cancer. And everybody started to cry. So it still hits you, especially my son, who's 19. And he, he just lost it. He was holding her. And it was a very, um, it was a very emotional moment. But, but thankfully, it lasted for about, um, about 10 minutes that we were in this down. And we quickly turned around and said, we need to do the right thing. We can beat this. There's nobody better suited than, than us as a family and with the community that we have and with the family uh, to beat this. And so that's what we chose to do from that, that second on. Chemotherapy began immediately. At the start of a long and difficult recovery, Breezy faced a tough decision. She could either fight to keep her left leg or she could have it amputated. Why I decided to have my leg amputated was because Sarah Renderton was a really big inspiration to me. And doing the lip salvage is, you can't really do much with it. It's like you're trying to save your leg, so you have to go back and do operations to crank up the knee. And you, I think you can't even run with it. And I love running. So I always thought the amputation was the best from the beginning. The night before I was going to get it amputated, I was trying to stay calm. That night I got really nervous before I went to bed, but I wasn't that nervous before. And I wrote on my leg, everybody was signing my leg, and we, like, drew lines on it, and then everybody wrote a little note, and I said goodbye, my friend, because I'm going to miss you, like, trying to be kind of funny and trying to keep my spirit up. Before and after her surgery, Breezy received support and mentoring from CAF Sarah Reinertsen. Part of the work that we do at the Challenge Athletes Foundation is really answer the question, what if or what now? And the fact that I was able to just help Breezy out in that time after her amputation, her whole family was saying, you know, now what? And we were there to help answer that question. Breezy has already become a mentor to other kids facing amputations. And she is energizing an entire community with her courage and positive attitude. Team Breezy is raising hundreds of thousands of dollars to help other challenge athletes live their dreams. And while she pays it forward, she is getting a little help from the Challenged Athletes Foundation along the way. I know that Breezy has the strength and determination to do anything she wants to. Wildflower is rightly known as one of the toughest venues in endurance sports. 
Just over a year and a half after her amputation, Breezy was at the starting line for the mountain bike triathlon. This journey has been hard, but I'm glad I got through it. I was trying to stay strong, and I know I'm going to be crossing a lot of finish lines and triathlons and maybe Ironmans, and I can't wait to be more athletic. Hi, I'm Breezy. When they first told me I had cancer, I wasn't sure what it meant. I was confused. I was nine. I think my age was my strength. When I started chemotherapy, I had this overwhelming feeling that this was happening to me for a reason. I said, I think I can help people. I didn't know how, but I knew I wanted to. As I thought about life, cancer, and even losing my leg, I realized I was actually pretty lucky. I told my mom that day, I'm thinking about all the kids in the world that are dying because they don't have food or water. It makes me feel like what I'm going through isn't such a big deal. And I think the truth is, what we experience in life can seem either simple or overwhelming. It really depends on the way you look at it. I thought, I have cancer, and even with the chemotherapy, I'll have to remove the tumor and most of my leg with it. I realized that I could be sad and I could be mad, but would that really help me? No, it wouldn't. It would simply make me more miserable. So I made a decision I was going to be positive. I couldn't control cancer, but it could control the impact it had on me. To me, it seemed simple. I was alive, so I was going to live. Challenge athletes granted me that cool running leg you saw in the video. I love my new running leg, so when my dad said to me, only two weeks after getting it, hey Breezy, want to do the wildflower triathlon? Not fully understanding what I was getting myself into, I said, sure, why not? I mean, we had a whole 10 days to train. Let's do it. <laughs> that was tough. I'd been through 10 months of chemotherapy, and at the end, when there were hundreds of people, all I was thinking was, I hope I don't fall on my face. Please, Lord, help me get across the finish line. I had no energy left. But somehow, I did it, and it was awesome. But what the video doesn't show is me falling off my bike, crying as I laid on my left side, my prosthetic foot still clipped to the pedal. It doesn't show me walking much of a two-mile run, facing the reality that running for me was no longer as easy as simply putting one foot in front of the other. But what it does show is that when I crossed the finish line, none of that mattered. I did it, and I was so proud. I realized at that moment, by pushing myself through the pain and frustration and crossing that finish line, I was able to heal some of the pain of losing my leg and prove to myself that I could still swim, bike, and run, even if it took a whole lot more effort. A few months later, I attended the Julie Foudy Soccer and Leadership Camp. Julie shared a simple but powerful message during one of the leadership sessions. She showed us a picture with a message that will stick with me for life. It read, this is your comfort zone, and right outside of it is where the magic happens. 
I'd definitely been living outside of my comfort zone on a regular basis. And the magic that I didn't recognize at first was that I was learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. The times when I choose to push past the challenges and take life head on, that's when the magic happens. I've been asked to speak and sing in front of thousands, but one of the hardest things I've been asked to do was when I was asked to speak to just one young girl my age. My doctor from Stanford called. He had an urgent request. He asked if I would consider speaking to an 11-year-old girl named Taylon who needed to amputate her leg above the knee immediately. He asked if I could share my story with her and a message of hope. At this point, to be honest, I was thinking, what can I possibly say to help this girl? She needs a mentor. She needs hope. I'm 11 years old. What am I going to say to help her? It all seemed too overwhelming, and I remember saying to my parents, I want to say no, but I know I can't. I was scared to pick up the phone. Our first phone call didn't last long, but was extremely powerful. She was so grateful to talk to someone her own age, someone who'd experienced what she was about to go through. Taylon decided to fight and amputate her leg, just like me. I visited her on Christmas Eve, four days after our phone call. Walking to that hospital room, I was definitely outside of my comfort zone, but deep down, I knew I was in the right place. I shared my experience with her, showed her my prosthetic and how it worked, and inspired her to sit up for the first time, scoot to the edge of the bed, and stand up with one leg. Over the next year, as our friendship grew, Taylon's cancer spread to her lungs, to her bones, and finally, as an inoperable tumor in her brain. She lived in tremendous pain, yet she was still quick with a smile. Taylon taught so many the true meaning of life with faith and love. And sadly, Taylon lost her battle in March. I'm honored to call her my friend. She's now my inspiration, and I'm so, so thankful I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and make that call. In the past year, I volunteered at three Dream Room makeovers for children fighting cancer, traveled to New York, Boston, and San Diego to participate in fundraisers and mobility clinics with the amazing Boston Strong Victims. I hiked 18 miles of Yosemite's famous Half Dome and even sang the national anthem at the A's game in front of 20,000 people. And this month, we're hosting our third annual Team Breezy Collegiate Cup, a charity benefit giving back to the organizations helping children fighting cancer. These are just some of the opportunities I've been given. I've lived more life in the past few years than some do in a lifetime. So what does this mean? You might be thinking, I'm not gonna run a triathlon, mentor kids with cancer, or sing the national anthem in front of 20,000 people. Well, the reality is, at some point, we all face challenges. And for some of us, they're life-size challenges. And while we can't control all the changes that may occur in life, we can control how that change impacts us, and in turn, how we impact those around us. I hope my story, the way I'm choosing to live my life, can help others. Three mottos I try to live by each day are first, be positive, because attitude is everything. Embrace challenges and the changes they bring and know you can make a positive impact on those around you, whether it is one person or one million. Second, remember, you're alive, so live, really live, and in everything you do, do it wholeheartedly. And finally, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to get outside of your comfort zone because I can tell you, that is where the magic happens. Thank you.